Welcome to Getting the Most from Code It Right. This is part one. We're going to cover profiles, rules, and reports. We're assuming you've already used the Code It Right tool and have some familiarity with how it works and what it does. If you haven't, please check out the Getting Started Guide at submain.com before continuing the tutorial. We're going to start with a brief overview of what Code It Right does and talk a little bit about how people are using it. Then we're going to jump right into the tips and tricks. We're going to show you how to get the tool to follow your standards and how to create effective rule profiles. We're going to talk about how best to use automated code correction, and we're going to do a little demo about how to generate guidelines documents from the tool and how to use reports and metrics to analyze your software. Code It Right is an automated code review tool that integrates right into Visual Studio. It can be used to ensure that your developers consistently follow best practices and standards, the ones that you agree that they should be using. It's much faster than manual code review or peer review, and it's 100% accurate every time because it's software reviewing your code, not people. That also makes it objective, repeatable, and accurate every time. You're going to get the same results every time you run it on the same code. Of course, we don't recommend that you do automated code review by itself. It should be a companion to manual code review and peer review. It's something that you can run daily, weekly, monthly, on check-in, depending on your needs. Code It Right also offers code quality analysis. It can be used to ensure that you're complying with industry practices, standards, and regulations, and it can identify and fix code smells, security problems, design issues, and it can eke out performance problems before they happen. Here's some general tips for incorporating code analysis into your project. Make sure that the business owner, the person paying for the project, is aware that it's happening. Code review and fixing code smells and problems can take a little time and cost a little money. So it's really important that the person paying for the project knows that it's happening. You should also develop a clear policy about what it is that you're going to review and what it is that you're going to fix when you find problems. It's really easy to get bogged down in fixing every little problem with the code, even if each one of them doesn't really affect the overall project. Establishing an automated process is very important. To go along with your manual code review, an automated process ensures that you've got a repeatable an accurate code review happening on a regular basis. It's important also to define when you're going to run these code reviews, when you're going to do manual review, and what it is that you're going to look for. And most importantly, do code review early and do it often. The longer you put it off, the more problems you'll probably have to fix in your code. For more on general tips, please refer to our ebook called Coding Standards in the Real World available on submain.com. Now let's talk a little bit about how Code It Right is being used in the real world by real people. There's a personal edition and a standard edition that are designed for solo developers and small development teams respectively. The tool provides objective code audit and automates consistent checking of code, which creates more consistent code across your developers and across your projects. What this does is make you a better programmer because it can teach you new best practices, things that you didn't know, and it can reinforce ones that you may have known, but sometimes slip through the cracks. In the long run, it creates efficiencies. If it's checking your code while you type it, there's less need later on for code refactoring. For larger development teams, there's an enterprise edition of Code It Right. This allows team leads to deploy rule profiles and ensure that there's a consistent application of standards across all your developers. The larger the team, the more important this is. It allows one person or one group of people to control the standards and rule sets that all developers use. The Enterprise Edition also has support for things like continuous integration and policy enforcement when you check in source code. It integrates right into TFS, it's got command line execution, and it works with MS Build, Team City, cc.net, and more. Now let's talk a little bit about how Code It Right works. In order to enforce best practices and standards, you have to follow the rules. Code It Right is based on the concept of the rule. It ships with a bunch of rules that each contains information about what a coding best practice is, how it can be violated, and how those violations can be fixed. For example, a rule can say that your method names have to be cased correctly. A rule instance, just like an instance of a class in object-oriented programming, is a rule that comes to life and is further configured to meet your particular needs. 
In other words, you can say only public member names should be cased using Pascal casing, or private member names should be camel cased. Those are both instances of the same rule, the rule being identifiers should be cased correctly. Lastly, a profile is a collection of rule instances that you put together that define your standards and can be used to find and fix all of the violations in your code. Now let's get right into the tips and tricks on how to get the most out of code it right. We talked a little bit earlier about the difference between rules and rule instances, and that a rule instance can be configured to work for you. I'm going to show you exactly how to do that using code it right. So here we have two methods in a C-sharp code file. One's public, one's private, both are Pascal cased. But let's say that your coding standards say that private methods should be camel cased, while public methods are Pascal cased. Here's how we configure code it right rule instance to do that for you. We're going to go into our profile editor and we're going to find the rule instance that currently is saying public and private members should both be Pascal cased. It's right here. As you can see, the scope of this rule instance applies to private and public. So the first thing we're going to do is edit this and tell it not to apply to private. By unselecting private, clicking save, done. But now we have no rule that says that our private methods should be camel cased. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to make a copy of this rule. I'm going to call it private members camel cased. I'm going to change the scope to apply just to private. I'm going to change the identifier case from Pascal to Camel, and I'm going to save it. So now we've got two rule instances, one for private members saying they should be Camel cased, and one for other members saying they should be Pascal cased. When I save my profile and go back into my code, you can see that code it right instantly picked up my private method and said it's not cased correctly. And I can have code it right automatically rename it according to the rules that I just configured. Code it right ships with its own rules software development kit. This means that as a programmer, you can write your own rules from scratch, or you can extend the existing rules that come with code it right so that they work exactly the way that you need them to. How to write custom rules is a topic for another tutorial down the road, but for now, let me just show you a sample of how a custom rule can be used to extend a rule profile so that the rule profile enforces your best practices and standards the way you want it to. So, Here's a code file that has two different public class definitions in it. By default, this violates a rule that ships with Code It Right. I'll show you. When we run our analysis on the project, we're going to see Code It Right throw up a violation that says, hey man, your source file should only contain one public type. It's doing it for this file too, which as you can see has an abstract class definition and then two other classes that inherit from it. Convenient maybe, but it's hard to find these other classes when you're looking for them in a project and they're buried in a file that has a name that doesn't really indicate what's in it. So, in general, a pretty good rule. Let's take a look at it in the Rule Profile Editor. So, here's the rule. This is the one that ships from Code It Right. And as you can see over here, you can customize the scope and the target, but that's about it. It's pretty indiscriminate otherwise. So, what I decided was I want to allow myself to put multiple public class type definitions in a single file as long as I follow some standards. For example, if the file's called Exceptions, or maybe Delegates, I should be able to put multiple classes in there because I don't want to have to create a separate file for each one of my exceptions or delegates when there are only a few lines of code. So that's what I did. I wrote a custom rule and I'm going to add it to this profile now and show you how it works. Again, how to write custom rules is a topic for a tutorial at another time. But for now, a brief overview is that I wrote a custom rule using the custom rules SDK that ships with code at write compile the DLL, put it in the right folder, and now I can add it to my profile because code it right knows where it is. Here's my custom rule. I gave it a separate name so I can distinguish it from the original one. I'm adding it to the file. I give it a, the rule instance a name. Again, a name that distinguishes it from the original. And as you can see here, what I did when I extended the rule is allowed you to enter excluded file names, such as exceptions, maybe delegates, and you can come back and do that with all kinds of other stuff. 
I'm going to save my rule. I'm going to unselect this rule instance because mine does everything it does and a little bit more, so we don't need this one anymore. I'm going to save my rule profile, rerun the analysis, and now you can see Code it right is only identifying the error for the file called cars. And that's valid. That's the one I want Code it right to tell me I violated the rule with. I didn't want it to tell me for exceptions, and now it no longer does. As you start to build your rule profiles, you may realize that it may not be so efficient for you to run the full rule set every single time you review your code. For example, your instant rule evaluation should probably be a much smaller subset of your rule profile than what you run daily or even weekly. I'm going to show you a quick sample about how you can keep different rule profiles and use them for different things. So here's my full rule profile. I base this on the Microsoft standards and best practices. This contains every single rule that I want enforced all the time across my development team. So what, having done that, I'm also going to want to have smaller sets of rules. So one that I can run daily, for example. So this one's going to contain things that are easier to fix, uh, things that happen the most frequently, and things that we can kind of on a daily basis hit without taking too much time away from our daily development. So as you can see, it's already a smaller subset of the same rules we were just looking at. And then I may create another rule profile that I'm going to run weekly. This one's going to contain rules that are going to look at things like security, design issues, and performance violations. These are things that we don't necessarily need to fix every single day. And if we did, we might not get any of our regular development work done. But we shouldn't let go any longer than a week. And once again, different rule set, different sets of rules. When you get to the point where you have more than one rule profile, you also now have the problem of keeping your rule instances in sync across different profiles. Let's say you've got a very basic rule that exists in all of your profiles, but you decide you want to tweak the instance a little bit. Maybe it's that changing private modifiers from Pascal to Camel or Camel to Pascal that we talked about earlier. How do you do that when you've got different rule profiles? Well, Code It Right's got a great feature built in that allows you to merge profiles and keep those rules in sync. Let me show you real quick how that works. Here's my rule profile that contains my complete guidelines. If I just made a change to one of these rule instances, now I want to update the rule instance in my other profile for the same rule. So I'm going to click Merge Profiles. It's going to default on the left to the rule profile I was just looking at, and I'm going to select the one I want to synchronize with it on the right. Right off the bat, it's going to pop out and say, hey, here's the difference between the two. And I can look and see what's different exactly about the two of them. And then the best part here is I can update all of the changes on the left to the right, or I can do them one at a time. When I click Update, now my rules are in sync. I can save my daily code review, and everything's going to run consistent. All this talk about customizing rule instances and building different profiles could probably start to seem a little overwhelming at this point. It is a lot to take in. So here are some tips on how to get to having effective profiles. We start with a built-in profile. These come with Code It Right. There's one based on the Microsoft guidelines and another one that we've built for you that you can use for your instant code review. Once you start taking a look at these, it's one thing to sift through the rules and see if they apply to your standards, and it's another thing to see them in action. So we recommend evaluating the profile using your code. Start with a small project, don't go crazy and use a big one right away, and do an on-demand review. Then take a look at the violation list. For each one, ask yourself, is this a standard we want to follow? If it's not, you can modify the profile. You can remove the standard altogether, or you can change some of its properties, make it apply to a different scope, like we showed you before. Also ask yourself, does it apply in every case? Sometimes there's a rule that you want to follow most of the time. Sometimes you may not want to. In those cases, you can just ignore the instance in that particular project and move on. Leave it in the profile but ignore it in the case where it doesn't apply. As you do this, you can work your way up to bigger and bigger projects, evaluating the profile and tweaking it as you go. But it's key to get your profiles right before you start using them everywhere or rolling them out to your development team. Code It Right doesn't just find violations to your standards for you, it can also correct them automatically. Here's some tips on how to get the most out of the automated code correction feature of Code It Right. Most importantly, you should only use autocorrect 
for each violation if you understand the three following things. The first is, know why the rule exists. Understand the rule and the standard behind it. Secondly, understand what the correction options are. And third, understand why you would use each option in each case so that you could choose which option to use at the best time. It's not as simple as automatically correcting all the violations instantly because sometimes you may need to choose a different way to correct it or sometimes you may not want to correct it at all. Here's a method that I lifted right off of MSDN. It's from their example on how to write an async method that uses an async API call within it. Nothing wrong with this right now, so let me go ahead and remove this await statement just so we can see how Code it Write will pick up the problem and give us some options for correcting it. Obviously, this also doesn't compile, but we can use Code it Write to give us some more information about the violation and help us fix it. So here's my violation. Code it Write's telling me every async method should have an await statement. This is true. So over here, we could take a look at the actions it's recommending. Well, Code it Write says, I can remove the async modifier for you, which means if you don't have an await statement in there, maybe it's not async. The other option it's giving us is that we can add an await statement inside the method manually. This isn't something that Code it Write can fix automatically for us, because it requires a human developer to look at, evaluate, and determine where the await statement goes. If we need some more information to decide what to do about this problem, we can look inside the Code it Write help file. Every violation comes with all of this information. It describes the rule, how to correct it, and it shows examples of a violation as well as the fix. So we can use all this information within Code it Write to determine what to do. In this case, the right thing to do would be to add that await statement back in. So we're going to do that manually. Automated code correction is a powerful feature that can save your development team a lot of time fixing problems with their code. It should also be used with care. So as we said before, when you're evaluating code at write and building your root profiles, make sure you run it on smaller projects first until you've had a chance to evaluate every violation, understand what the violation's about and what the autocorrect options are, and make a decision about whether you should fix it, ignore it, or change the rule itself. Use autocorrect and correct all with caution, and here's why. Sometimes there's exceptions to the rules. Sometimes you're breaking rules on purpose. There are applications and instances where you may need to violate a particular security rule in order to get the app to work the way you need it to. And lastly, not all violations of the same type are always corrected in the same way. You may have a different answer to the same problem depending on the context of the problem. And remember, it's always a good idea to run unit tests both before and after you make changes to your code, especially automated changes, to ensure that the functionality of your application isn't changed when the code gets fixed. Once you've finished creating effective rule profiles to enforce your standards, you can use those profiles to automatically generate standards documentation for your developers right from Code it Right. To generate standards documentation, open up the rule profile from which you want to create the documentation in the profile editor. Click Generate Document, and it's that simple. Doing this will create a single document that contains all of the information about the rules that you want enforced across your development team, including descriptions, how to correct violations, and examples. Your developers can use this to review all of the rules before they start development, or as a reference when they come across violations that they want more information about. Once you've customized your rule profiles and you're using Code it Write on a regular basis, you can start to take advantage of its reporting features. It's got a built-in violations report that can be exported that lists all of the code violations for a given project and a given rule profile. There are also more customizable pivot reports, and the Enterprise Edition has more advanced metrics. This is the violation report available to you within Visual Studio. This can be exported to Excel or XML so that you can take a snapshot of the violations of your project at any given time. Also available is a pivot view that categorizes your exceptions and violations by category and is completely customizable. This can also be exported to Excel if you'd prefer to work with it there. The Enterprise Edition has even more advanced metrics available.
If at any time while you're evaluating Code It Right or using it later on, you have any questions or need any help, we're here for you. Send us an email, give us a call, or see if the community can help you at our community forums and other online resources at community.submain.com.